Thank you very much, Tess, for this um, experience project. Thank you for bringing the voices of African men to Europe and to the world. And so now we want to let them speak for themselves. The next speaker is Prince Hilary Maloba. Uh, and he will talk about his work in the VMMC Experience Project. And also he will talk a little bit about his own experience as a child. Thank you. My experience, I grew up as a young, happy man without knowing anything to do with the circumcision until I was ambushed by thousands of men <coughs> surrounding me with the terrifying songs on circumcision and told I was going to pay the debt of circumcision. I was circumcised twice which resulted in excessive bleeding, removal of skin and a deep burn wound with a prolonged wound healing. I was treated with the cultural herbs which are most painful than circumcision. What I went through, I don't want future generation to go through. Circumcision has no value in protecting any disease. It's purely lies that circumcision has any role in prevention of HIV. It's a mother of pains, torture, death, and suffering for children and infants. Terrorist act. Business of bloody through, through children. Circumcision seems like the answer to those in, in HIV business because number of people who could be targeted for circumcision business could run into hundreds of millions. <laughs> Every year, millions more male children would be available to keep the programs profitable. At first, the promoters claim they were only targeting sexually active adults in Nyanza, among Luos in Kenya, and in Buganda Kingdom, Eastern and Northern Uganda. But quickly found out that most of them don't want to be circumcised. Like in Lowland, low politician who promoted a circumcision in the region against their low culture and not circumcise themselves. Ask Ken Owino, who is facing opposition from these giants in his community, beneficiary of VAVMC, our politicians and those working in the same sector. So, they changed the strategy to children to result children from schools and to infants born in hospitals. The more children you get from schools for circumcision, the more money you get, you are paid. The more babies, the more boy babies are born, the more money doctors get acquiring wealth through blood business. My work in anti-circumcision stock HIV because we are the midst of an epidemic of fake news spreading blunt lies that circumcision prevents diseases faster than a virus, I believe in education as the key to changing long established patterns of social behavior. It can help in combating this WHO and UN. UN aids propaganda that circumcision prevents diseases. It's through practical oriented education that our children will have the awareness, skills, and knowledge to acquire the attitudes <coughs> necessary for a healthy life without being circumcised. Rebel with the cause. 
Uganda was doing well in the, uh, reducing HIV infection through a strategy called ABC, abstain, be faithful, use condom, and was praised internationally. Then suddenly we heard over the media that Western scientists have done research and found out that male circumcision prevents circumcised person by 60% not to get infected with the HIV and WHO recommends mass circumcision in Africa. They were pushing VMMC in Africa to end HIV among uncircumcised communities in Africa targeting boy children born in hospitals and those in schools as part of part of the drive to end HIV. I wondered, how can this be true if Bagisu, my uncles in Uganda, and my own tribe do circumcise their children, men, Muslims do circumcise infants, boys, yet AIDS is killing them, terminating many homes, and yet they are circumcised. As lies and fake news <coughs> of circumcision was spreading like fire in the sugar plantation with the millions of dollars poured in Uganda and the Kenya governments to end HIV with the NGOs receiving huge donor funding that target was primary students aged boys of 4 to 12 years of age. They move from school to school using WHO, UN AIDS, and the Ministry of Health government policy of lies that by suppressing children, HIV will come to an end. As, corrupt, as corruption carries the day in Uganda and Kenya, agents of VMC partner with the school administrations by giving them money to gather small boys and tell them that if they get circumcised, they will never get HIV. And that AIDS kills only uncircumcised people. They use convincing language to trap these innocent children to go for circumcision. They are told far that, uh, that after circumcision, they will not be infected with HIV and pest the cancers. They give children free sweets, some give toys, money etc. Then take these children in lorries to their circumcising centers. These children are circumcised, given first treatment, then they are carried back to their region and dumped there without further medical and social support. Bearing in mind that the parents of these children were not informed of these atrocities. They are shocked to see their children circumcised, dumped there, go to their homes screaming, and prepared parents to deal with the healing of their boys many borrow money for further treatment of their children. I have met many parents who are furious with the VVMC agents for hijacking their children and sacrificing them without their knowledge and consent. Circumcision is violating the rights of children through forced a circumcision as a way to end HIV in Africa based on blunt lies. Serious complications and even death have been reported from traditional circumcision carried out on children and death from a clinical male circumcision on infants 
children, youth, and men. I work as director of VMMC Expanded Projects in Africa. You can watch our work on our website. I work in the in the hard regions where VMC is a business with the millions of money being poured in to circumcise children, challenging this established government system, you are regarded as an enemy of the state police and an enemy of those in this big business. We have received several threats, chased, blocked from taking circumcision live videos or pictures in clinics or in village homes. Sometimes you become powerless when threatened often come for your system to escape forced circumcision. Thank you for your attentions. Yes, my Lord, and we thank you for coming here, for taking it upon you to come to this cold country <laughs> and to be here at this press conference. So we also thank you for being here and uh, for giving uh, this speech. So because we are running late, we of course we will wrap it up. We will be faster now. And so you can uh, go where you have to go after the press conference. So we speed it up a little bit. The next speaker is uh, Ovino Ojambo and he will talk about his experience as working as a chairperson of uh, Intact Kenya. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Bals. Uh, as you can see, my name is Kennedy Owino. I'm heading a, a Intact Kenya, which is an organization which shares research-based information on circumcision and intact care. Uh, personally, I come from Nyanza, a region found in southwestern Kenya, where cultural circumcision had never been practiced among the Luos. Intact Kenya was formed about six years ago when I realized that the rolling out of mass male circumcision in Africa was raising eyebrows. Children were getting forcefully circumcised from schools, hospitals, and even churches. Teachers were getting bribed in, on, in order to hand over school young children for circumcision. Adverts were lower the mainstream media and no legal action was taken against medical personnel who bought circumcisions. Uh, more than four-fifths of, of men in the world are intact, including those in the United Kingdom, here in Germany, South America, India, Russia, and other parts of Asia, except for Muslims. As part of the fraudulent scheme, we Africans are being told the opposite a manipulative and blatant lie no African need to be coerced by or to fall cruel, to, to, fall to cruel circumciser. Uh, to solve a problem is necessary to first find its cause. We started following the river back to its source. All this started from some random control trials, the RCTs, that were carried out in Kenya, Uganda and South Africa. The RCTs came up with a claim that male circumcision lowers the risk of HIV AIDS. But why was HIV AIDS on the rise since the campaign to massively circumcise laws took its root back in 2007? On 11th September 2013, a popular Kenyan daily newspaper, The Standard, reported how the push for male circumcision in Nyanza had failed to reduce infections. All these led to the commencement of our campaign to terminate compulsory male circumcision in Luo land. I began to spread education and awareness to Luo's living in Nyanza. We successfully stopped a mandatory circumcision bill in Sia County. We distributed t-shirts to both children and adults. We organized a public rally in Migori County. We attended live radio interviews, after which we rewarded listeners with books and magazines. We also gave pens and stickers in public service vehicles. And we have also managed to stop the circumcisers from taking children in some schools. In one of our interviews, a chief was aggrieved by the incident in which an employee of the body which carries out mass male circumcision in the region 
the Nyanza Reproductive Health Society stormed into a home, found a young boy whose mother had gone to the river to fetch water, forcefully circumcised him, then forcefully circumcised him, then disappeared into the thin air. On arrival from the river, the mother of the boy was astonished to find her son in a pool of blood. Basing his views on this incident, the chief condemns forced circumcision of minors below the age of 18. One day, while I was away from home for some time, a few days later when I returned home, I was shocked to find that my 10-year-old nephew was circumcised on the previous Friday. I was infuriated, boarded a vehicle to the clinic to seek clarification from the doctor who took him from the school together with other young boys from, for the cut. My mother did not sign the consent form. Uh, the boy of the mother, is my sister, also did not sign the consent form while I was also away. The child was in pain and could not even answer the questions I asked him when I went home. I was really saddened by this because my conversation with the mutilator him, so he walked away into one of the pickups and drove off. Obey Health Center, where this happened, is found in Homer Bay County within the outskirts of Oyukis town. The kids are given bread and a bottle of soda after the operation. One doctor I talked with for so long who offered me a job after my, my um, and uh, after taking my number, who is called Dan. This Dan said that he comes from Sierra County, but currently works uh, with Nyanza Reproductive Health Society in Uyugistan, which is found near our home. My attempt to take legal action was as unsuccessful as the doctors to refuse to give my lawyer a medical report which was be to be used to sue them. We are also out to condemn the atrocity from being perpetrated on African infants for the same reasons. There is still a lot to be done in order to thwart the Western NGOs determination to circumcise African men. The ongoing prevalence of circumcision clinics is an indication that this mass male circumcision is not stopping anytime soon. What are we going to do about it? We are here to seek global partnership to help stop male genital mutilation in Africa. Finally, I'm very grateful to organizations like Mogis, which is headed by German doc Dr. Christian Balz, TAB organization, and Tere Des Femmes, which is headed by Dr. Eda Nabaterega. Those organizations are some of the German non-NGOs opposing male genital mutilation on the same grounds they used to argue against FGM. My sincere and deeply rooted appreci appreciation to the individuals and organization who have contributed in one way or another towards the long progressive journey of African interactivism. Thank you. We also thank you for doing the work that you do in Africa. We are really grateful that you are there and uh, this is really important work that you do in Africa.